Is Shopify dropshipping really dead? Let's find out the truth now. Hey everyone, it's Ricky here from Shopify Dropshipping Lifestyle and in today's video, is it too late to get into Shopify Dropshipping in 2018 and beyond, all right? So let's get straight into it. But before we do, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and hit the notification bell. All right, don't forget to follow me on Instagram, at Ricky Hayes IG. Okay, guys, I talked to you all there. I had a lot of awesome value. But getting into the topic, is it too late to get into dropshipping in 2018, and pretty much 2019, and pretty much in 2019? And yes, I am the sneeze king, so let's move on. So what has happened to Shopify dropshipping and dropshipping in general in the last 12 months? The market is getting more and more competitive due to the being your own boss becoming a big thing around the world. Basically that means because people are just wanting to change their jobs, they're not either satisfied with their job or that they know there's a lot better of a lifestyle that they can have out there, living with their family, traveling the world, uh, for a lot of people buying a fucking sports car. Um, but that's, that's sort of one thing that's happened. Um, what has also happened is that Facebook ads are becoming more expensive. If you actually think that the world is becoming a bigger place, the population is growing, and as a result of population growing, our community of entrepreneurs is growing, then naturally what happens is more people are going to get into this. Naturally, as a result, then platforms that we had previously used are becoming more expensive, okay? I want to inform you all as little obvious fact. Right now, things are expensive, especially fucking Christmas, tell me about it. Um, but I started this about 18 months ago, and back then I was watching, if any of you guys heard of like Nick Peroni's free course, I bought a number of courses, and I sort of ventured into his, and watching his videos, it's like, wow, this is so cheap, and now it's not, okay? Now, that's the reality, but if we look at it in another 18 months, people starting then, they're gonna say that we had it easy. This is just the reality of what happens. There is going to be something that we'll move on to next, and okay, and one of those, I think, is Google. Anyway, but Facebook ads are becoming more expensive, Products are getting more expensive. Shipping, taxes, outsourcing. I don't like taxes, but we have to pay them. Products are becoming more expensive, okay? You know, like manufacturing companies have expenses as well. They have a lot of, you know, like depending on the size of the company, they might be on the stock exchange in their country, let's say China, and their board of directors wants to, a bigger profit margin, you know, and so they bump up the prices 5 10%. We have to wear that or we have to boost the prices. Okay, what's also becoming harder is the disparency. No one talks about this, but this is something I've done a lot of study on because I'm very passionate about, is the disparency between people's income, you know, their actual weekly, monthly, yearly income, as opposed to the general cost of living, okay? Now here in Australia, the general cost of living is becoming substantially higher. For the most part, um, it's if you know what you're doing with your money, like anything, you'll be fine. But you know, electricity is going up, water is going up, groceries going up, um, the cost of just sending your children to school, stuff like that, is all going up. And you know what that means? That means people are trying to find the cheapest price, okay? People are trying to find the cheapest price. Uh, there are still going to be spontaneous buyers, that's always the reality, but p there's this growing disparity because people's income isn't growing much compared to their cost of living. At the end of the day, having a roof over your head is more important than buying some fucking toy, right? Or, or, or whatever. Uh, you know, baby things. I mean, obviously, if you have a baby. Anyway, but you see my point. And so that's why it's also becoming harder. It's it's inevitably becoming harder because of external factors. We can't control it. Now, how do you, man, how do you control that? Well, that's why we have a lot of methods in place so that we give them the illusion of value. All right? So let's get into this further. And the amount of time spent running your stores has increased to maintain your competitive edge. Okay, so that these are the main four points that I really have seen in the last 12 months is that I've noticed that I've had to spend more time. I uh, That's why I invest heavily in automation tools and I outsource what I can, but I like automation tools because they mean that I can focus my attention elsewhere, okay? Um, you, you, you can't actually expect that, um, sorry, you can't actually expect that you can make a, a huge store without outsourcing, uh, whether it's automation in terms of through apps or outsourcing through to actual people. You're gonna have to get used to that, but this is why, this is one of the big things that's really happened, okay? Because the com competition 
you're going to need to spend more time to maintain your edge. I'm still getting used to this PowerPoint thing. I made this before. Anyway, but the truth is the market is becoming so expensive, but this is a good thing. It means that Facebook, Google, Shopify, other platforms, you know, uh, Magneto, whatever, um, WooCommerce, are going to further lock down on crappy stores. That means customers get a better experience. I've always said this, but I've, I've always found this very uh, somewhat confusing. I don't see this from other people on YouTube and that, that they don't really talk about. They do, but it's never been a focal point of, of, uh, of focus. Did I say that right? Anyway, my point is, is that business is like life, okay? You don't treat your friends like shit, do you? Well, you shouldn't. Don't treat your customers like shit, right? It's as simple as that. These customers pretend they're your friend, right? Because you know what friends do? They scratch each other's backs. You know what that means for e-com? It means that they'll come back and buy again. It is a simple method in life that people seem to forget about. They're so focused on acquiring new customers. They don't even look at their emails, okay? They don't look at their emails and see that someone's like, I actually want to buy, I just had this issue. Oh, all right, I missed out on a sale. Okay, look at your damn emails. Look at your damn live chat. You know, respond to your customers, treat them fairly. This is why I talk about apps so much because these apps always get the result that you desire consistently forever to give the customers the best fucking experience they can fucking get, okay? And you know what? For my clients and my stores, you know what that means? They get an insane amount of customers coming back. All right, people say to me that, uh, I focus too much on that. Blah, 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 blah. I'm right, okay? I don't care how arrogant this sounds. I am right. Anyway, and I, I found this obvious truth. Here's a little bit of a backstory about me. Yes, I used to actually work outside, and I used to have a job. I had multiple jobs, in fact. And one of them was I worked in a government, right? A government organization, and I was in the IT department. If you don't know me, I was an IT guru. And I still am, I like IT. And, hello, dog showed up. <laughs> anyway, and uh, over many years, I built a lot of trust with the, the people that I work with. And I love them very deeply, okay? And you know how I did it? Through common decency and respect and sticking to my word. If they needed help, I would help them. Regardless of what it is, that's what I'm there for, right? And they would scratch my back, right? I'm not kidding, they would literally uh, I had a few situations where I actually needed unique departments help to to actually do some specific tasks. Uh, I'm not going to explain it, but anyway, and th they went out of their way to help me. Okay, now it doesn't take five minutes to build that trust. It takes months to years. Okay, and you do this the same with your customers. You're building a business. You're not building a five second store that you're just going to shut down at the marketplace over Christmas. Hey. No, you're actually building a brand, okay? You wanna build a brand, and that takes time. Because building a brand, let me tell you, the core message of building a brand is trust. Okay, everything in life comes down to trust. Trust, reliability, and respect. Whether you're in the workforce or doing this, you need to understand that if you wanna actually be successful, this is what you have to do. The reason people are saying it's dead is because three, four years ago, people made these piece of shit stores, didn't actually respond to customers, but got away with it because because it wasn't as near as competitive or saturated as it is now, okay? And now these things are coming to light. People are like, what? I have to talk to customers? What? I have to help customers? Get used to it. If you work in the workforce, you're an employee, you have customers. It's the exact same methodology. I'm sick of it. Absolutely sick of it. it is, I'm sorry, but it's stupid. If you actually think that you can do this and not provide good support for customers, don't do it, okay? I'm sorry, just don't do it. Moving on. And again, that's another thing that other people are just gonna talk about. They're like, all you need to do is make a, an ad stacking south and everything will make sense. No, get real. People seem to forget, again, that this is a business, not a hobby. I sort of touched on this anyway. Don't go down, you don't go down the street and expect to be updated on your order, let's say at McDonald's, not updated and not respected like a human being. You wouldn't go back there, would you? If you have a crappy experience, are you going to go back there? No. Simple. Now, let me tell you that Shopify dropshipping will never die. 
it will evolve and it's evolving right now okay if you look back at let's say my videos and all these other people's videos you'll see a trend okay and one of the trends is shipping fulfillment centers all right if you, if you haven't seen that then it's it's there and uh because now so many people are making stores it's like well how do i differentiate myself shipping times okay one of the biggest things for like my clients and that especially that has differentiated themselves including myself is shipping times look into fulfillment centers pay that bit extra you have no idea how much it means to get a review that you can use as a testimonial or you can i mean they come back and buy again you have rainy days Oh shit, I spent $100 on ads, not a single sale. Oh, that's right, I still made $600 in sales today. I still made $200, $300 because all these people just came back. All right? Do you know how important that is? That's why businesses succeed and that's why some fail. Okay, you can, but Shopify will never die. You can get unlimited traffic, Facebook, Google, Bing, Snapchat, Instagram, YouTube, the list goes on and it'll always go on. All right, there's no one such method that's the golden egg. Facebook's become the golden egg because it has the most amount of traffic and it gets the fastest results. However, that is not entirely accurate. Uh, you know, I know a number of people um, that go purely down the Google path. They make a lot of money for a lot less work, okay? Um, I don't use Bing, I haven't used Bing, but I mainly use Facebook and Google, okay? If that's what you're wondering. I do do Instagram influencers, not a huge amount. Um, don't do YouTube or Snapchat, okay? So that's just what's going on. People literally think the one way to make sales is Facebook. I keep sort of touching on that. It's completely incorrect. You need to diversify your income streams. And I don't just mean that in terms of Facebook, Google, Bing, Instagram. I'm going to go into this right now. That's great. But what do we do, okay? So you make your business one they want to shop from, all right? Now, first things first is you make a store. You're going to start with something basic, and that's fine. We all start somewhere, but you need to watch my videos because I got literally heaps of free value there, it's beyond belief. Uh, you know, product page setup, descriptions, conversion hacks, app setups, automation, my actual, I didn't add it in, but Facebook marketing, um, Google marketing, just so many forms of marketing because uh, because I like to, to have all of that because I have had rainy days. There's no denying that. If I said that I haven't, then I'm lying. And I've had raining days, but it's these these other areas that has allowed me to uh, to still be profitable. All right. Um, so you want to take your business seriously. Don't just make a store, no effort, throw up some shitty ads, and think that Mark Zuckerberg is going to make you rich. Get real. He's too rich anyway. I just wanted to add that in. That's funny. Anyway, don't care. Shopify will all now. Let me just add that Shopify will always be king. No matter what people say that it's a secret, they want to keep it a secret. Shh. Shh. Oh, don't say that. Don't say this. You know, they're trying to keep it for themselves. Okay. The the thing is, is that Shopify will always be king because you can control the traffic. You know how important it is to control your traffic? FBA, Etsy, Amazon, um, whatever other ones out there. You can't. You, you can do sponsored posts, but you are just another supplier on another platform. All right. And that's the difference. Whereas Shopify... You're a merchant with your own site. So you control the entire experience once they land to your site. Whereas on FBA, let's say, or like Etsy or something, they click your link and it's it's everything's the same except your individual message. But on something like Shopify, it's your whole message. Your whole store is your message and in who you are. All right. So that's really important. That's the key difference. I know that I know a number of people that do extremely well on all of those platforms, okay? And, that, and that's fine. Who cares? They're doing well. They're making money. They're paying their groceries. That's all that fucking matters. There is no one that's the best uh, in terms of the right path to take. But in terms of how to control the traffic, Shopify is always the king. And of course, it means more work you have to put in, but it means that there's going to be long benefits, okay? You know, again, like myself, I know a number of people that are now, you, you build this knowledge, you show you know your stuff, and people come to you for, like, let's say, a course, mentoring, uh, marketing for them. Okay, people seem to forget that what we do as entrepreneurs, there are people that have, have no interest in being uh, a marketer or uh, back end. I get contacted a lot now 
just about setting up the back end of people's stores because I'm so good at it that they see such quick and easy results that people pretty much are wanting to pay me quite a bit to do that for them. And I like doing it. And that's what I mean by education is also key. People think that it's all just about make money. Education is one of the key elements, all right? Um, but as I said, so you know, email marketing, post-purchase upsells, in-card upsells, exit intent, messenger marketing, text marketing, SEO, Facebook page, Instagram page, Google, Bing. These are all different traffic sources, all right? So you think about like you follow with, with what I heavily emphasize on, I don't know why that's come undone. <laughs> Um, but what I heavily emphasize on is capture their DM email, DM email, get their messenger, get their text between those three avenues. Okay. Now let me tell you a little secret. Text marketing is not used near enough in e-com, but I can tell you just if you watch my video, which I know, I know a number of people have already copied, including big drop shippers, SMS bump is an absolutely mandatory app. Okay, if, if you're not going to install any app, at least install SMS Bump and set it up. That is, it's such a profound app. All right, but what is the real key? I've sort of touched on this any, anyway. The real key is putting your customer first. Okay, I said this earlier in the video. Your customer is first. Now, I understand that starting out, that it's not because you need customers and you need consistent flow, right? And that's where most of you are, and that's fine. What I'm saying is though, you can still put customer first at the beginning. You don't need to have a perfect polished diamond. You just build, make a polished diamond over time, right? And so you want to start with the customer in mind first and you expand on it, okay? It's like anything, you know, everything I've done, you look at my YouTube, I look, I watched one of my first videos and it was shit, right? But I look now and I'm far more confident. My video quality is getting better. Um, I am taking the time to just make it more engaging, stuff like that. And it's the exact same thing with Shopify. I find it baffling that people do not think this. I just sh simply follow the videos, get started, start drop shipping. Once you get traction, find fulfillment centers, focus on, focus on customer retention, big one, and your brand will naturally grow. People, uh, I've seen so many pages and so many things where people have, uh, there's a lot of work they can do, but they've already done something really special because they put their customer first. They know what their customer wants. And this is why a general niche works best. Okay, a general niche will always work best because you're not just catering for everyone. You're catering for specific people. The people I've seen in recent times that are doing the best are the ones that are making niche brand stores. That's what I mean by evolution. It's the general stores are not dead and they're never gonna die but they are becoming harder. Whereas with the general niche, you can build a brand because you're targeting the same type of people, all right? It's important to remember, unless you're something like, um, you know, an actual general, massive general store that we all have, like let's say Walmart. People mainly use Facebook to get instant results, but this is a lifelong business and not a short-term cash grab. Get that out of your mind. Stop thinking like that, stick to your job, work slowly at it. Who cares who owns the most? This is a journey about you, okay? Now, this is not giving you massive facts. I learned the fact that this is a journey about you. You can watch my video, you can take whatever you want from it, you can hate me, you can love me, that is fine. But just remember that this journey is about you, right? And I, I know people that just wanna make enough so they can travel. <laughs> Be my guest, that's, that's all that matters. Because all that we have is, is time, we all have time and it's limited, right? So that's what I mean by it's, it, don't think the instant, you want instant results. We don't want instant gratification. Take your time, enjoy the journey, enjoy your life, okay? This is what this is really about. An entrepreneur is not about putting on flashy suits, having a sports car or a mansion. Those are all just inanimate objects that can be easily replaced. However, your time is irreplaceable, okay? I've always said that, but your time is irreplaceable. Enjoy it, right? That's So enjoy your journey. Educate yourself. Constantly keep an open mind. Try new things, right? That's one of the... And I sort of touched on it there anyway. <laughs> but you can see here that like, you know, I, I have... I can touch on it, but I've got heaps of my other videos. This is the real key to Shopify that you need to learn that I'm sorry that other people are probably going to get shitty at me for saying... But this is the real key. This is the truth. 
This is reality. You can't escape reality. I still see so many people trying to make average stores, trying to get sales and wondering why they don't get sales. And they don't get sales because they're not putting in the effort. And I can tell you now that these three things, basically putting your customer first, the journey about you that constantly just, you know, enjoying the journey and learning. So, you know, customer first, keeping an open mind and learning, right? Those are your three things. You know, I learned new things just this morning before this video. I'm learning new things like just doing this presentation. I've learned something new that I'll use for like my future webinar, right guys? So that's important. Now, I just want to also add, I do apologize for not making any videos for about a week, week and a half. I've been on holidays with my partner, um, had a, an absolute blast. Um, it was, Obviously I still work, work never stops. But I hope you did like today's video guys. Um, I just wanted to touch on this because I see it come up a lot and I wanted to just, it's something I'm very passionate about and, it, and it, this is the, the, the key to your success, okay? If you did like today's video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and hit the notification bell, bell down below. Don't forget to comment. Comment if you like today's video, and what do you think of uh, my presentation style? Do you like my presentation style? I'm trying new things to make it a little bit more engaging, so comment that down below. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram, at Ricky Hayes IG. Okay, guys, I'm going to get back to work. I hope you all have a lovely day. Thanks for your time. Take care. Bye.